Hey, everybody, we're back. Let's talk about it. Chuck and Laura, we're going to be here at 7 o'clock uh, Calvary World TV. What are we talking about today, Laura? We're talking about the Proverbs 31 woman. So we're back. We were off for two weeks. Uh, Ruben had a commitment, our producer. And uh, happy that, birthday, Jade. Yeah, and <laughs> and the week before that, I got I got injured. I have a back injury that I re aggravated, so I I could barely move. But I was doing some Arnold Schwarzenegger type weight training. No, I was not. <laughs> so anyway, um, we're back and we're good, we're happy to be here and we're talking about Proverbs thirty one. It was Mother's Day, right? Yes, Happy Mother's Day, ladies, moms, and grandmas, mentor moms. Yeah, so uh, it was nice. It was awesome, and I'm wearing my OG Calvary hat. So I hope that shout out to Brian Broderson. No, I'm just <laughs> playing. I hope that uh, uh, I get that energy today. So um, anyway, Proverbs 31. Pastor Joe he did a little message on the, on because it, it was Mother's mm-hmm. Day, and so I really am intrigued by what we were talking about of who wrote Proverbs 31. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think what you were saying was awesome. So it says, um, the words of King Lemuel's mother, but then the little footnote says, exact identity of the author unknown. A Jewish tradition reads, a king against whom there is no uprising. So it's believed that the mother of a king wrote this, and it's believed by some people to be Bathsheba, which is Solomon's mom. Yeah. So I got to ask you a question, right? What would you say about a woman with this resume? She was amazing in high school, got straight A's. She was the prom queen, went to college, graduated cum laude, right? So if you don't know, that's pretty pretty hard to do. Um, Then went on to law school and earned a JD, graduated cum laude, and then started her own law practice and had been doing that for 15 years. What would you say about that kind of career resume? I would say, how's her walk with Jesus? <laughs> if you guys don't know by now, that resume is my wife's. <laughs> um, but that's not what's important to her, and that's what I love about her. When I met her, she worked at a movie theater, <laughs> and I worked at a skateboard shop. Right. Well, no, I didn't. I worked retail. Then Cost I, plus world market. Then I worked at yeah. Ikea, and then I worked at a skateboard shop. Back when skateboarding wasn't cool. I was a whosoever before it was cool. Anyway, <laughs> um, when you used to actually like skateboarding, you used to get chased by the cops and stuff. Yes. And she actually used to come watch me skateboard. Yes. And But anyways, that, that doesn't matter. That's in the past. <laughs> that career... What's her walk like with Jesus? Proverbs 31, right? Yes. It asks us in verse 10, who could find a wife of a noble character, right? right? That's a great question. Yes. And a lot of us men, you should thank God because we're incredibly blessed to have one, well, a woman of God that you're married to or in your mm-hmm. life, whoever that is, right? Yes, definitely. But Laura, I want to ask you this. Well, go ahead. You wanted to share something. So we've heard many pastors share over the years about when God created Adam and Eve, made Adam from the dust and made Eve from his rib, Adam's rib. And he was put to sleep. And then when he woke up, the joke is he said, whoa, man, (laughs) because she was so beautiful, right? Mm -hmm, Yeah. Well, what I was thinking in today's vernacular, when someone looks at the Proverbs 31 woman, they would say, dang, girl. Right, dang, D A N G. So Proverbs thirty one. D A N G. D. She's devoted to the Lord. Devoted. And disciplined in the things of God. Disciplined. A. Absolutely about the affairs of her household and family. Absolutely about the affairs. Amen. N. Kind natured. She's naturally kind and works at kindness. Mm-hmm. And G. She's godly. If she works outside of the home, she's known as being on time and having a strong work ethic. G. Godly. If she works full time in the, in the home, she's godly, not grumpy. Mm-hmm. Not grumpy. She's not yeah. complaining about this or that, but she's God honoring and God fearing in all areas of her life. The ladies mm-hmm. at church, her very own family, her coworkers, neighbors, <laughs> fellow sports moms, anyone that knows her would say. That girl spends time with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow. That was amazing <laughs> what you just put Dang together. Dang, girl. The Proverbs know. 31 woman. Um, but here's the thing. So this episode, track with us here. Hang with us because it might be a little bit longer, but we want we want you to hang with us here. Um, 
So when you read this, right, uh, when I read verses 18 through 26, okay, uh, I mean, excuse me, 13 to, to, through 26, she selects wool and flax and works with willing with their hands. She rises while it's still night, provides food for her household. She evaluates a field and buys it. She draws her strength with her arms. She sees that her profits are good. Her lamp never goes out. She extends her hand to the spinning the staff oh, and, and to the mm -hmm. spindle. Uh, her hand reaches out to the poor. She's not afraid of her household when it snows. Um, verse 22, she makes her own bed coverings. She sews. Her husband is known at the city gates. Um, sits among the elders. We could keep going. Is this realistic? Because a woman could read this, and right. even from a man's point of view, mm -hmm. I'm like, dang. Right. Um, but is this realistic? No. It's not realistic, It's lady. not realistic apart from Christ. Amen. And the Lord is going to show the woman where she fits in, uh -huh. and the Lord is going to guide and direct by the power of the Holy Spirit what to do for each day. Got it. Got it. So when a woman reads this and she feels like, I can't do this, what would right. you say? I would say, and I've heard this said before, some women read Proverbs 31 and they want to throw their Bible across the room because they say, I can't do all these yeah. things. I don't do all these things. But what I love about God is the word is, this is the goal. This is God's Amen. girl and it's the goal. So when we read what Paul says... Imitate me like I imitate Christ. Yeah. How many men's events have you heard that oh, said? Oh, I heard a lot, <laughs> right? a lot, a lot. And we say, I can't do that, Lord. I don't yeah. want. And I, there's some brothers I don't want to imitate them, <laughs> for real. <laughs> uh, but some I want to, but some I don't. But it's the goal. The but Proverbs the goal. 31 Amen. woman is God's girl, and the goal is to um, do these things joyfully unto the Lord. And, okay. and there's different so seasons too. Let's talk. Let's be. Let's talk about this. A Proverbs 31 woman, she does all these things, but then even in, look at how it says today, she's, she evaluates a field and buys it. She plants a vineyard with her earnings. Obviously she's working. Right. So what do you, what would you say to the Christian mom who's balancing soccer, who's mm -hmm. balancing, trying to do these things, trying to be there for her husband and, and, you know, serving in the church or, or what would you say? How does that woman like mesh the career and all that that's with a good that. question yeah. okay so i heard one time this is one of my favorite little illustrations that pastor levi lusco shared he said J my wife jenny lusco could make this five course meal uh -huh. but if she comes home and her hair's all he comes home her hair's all frazzled and she's tired and she's depleted and she's grumpy but here's the meal he said i'd rather have a pizza and a joy-filled wife oh than that decked out meal that's and a, her a, amen <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but so that's the thing. Or like a, a, you would rather have a joy filled wife yes. than your house to be like a museum. Exactly. I know. So it's, right? it's balancing and juggling. So, for example, if that wife is de feeling depleted and she can't take little Johnny to the soccer game, maybe she asks grandpa to do it or maybe she calls mm -hmm. on another friend to do it so she could greet her husband when he comes home. So it's just juggling and balancing yeah. those things. But then a woman might say like greeting my husband to me is not important what's important is the meal or the I clean say, house girlfriend check your heart because greeting your husband is important now maybe not every single day yeah but again she, what does it say it says that her her husband is known in the gates and that's what i wanted to talk <laughs> about next in the biblical times they used to do their dealings and they're the at, at the mm -hmm. gates at the city gates they mm -hmm. used to talk and do their dealings and do their um Transactions, yeah, business, yes. their, you business know, contracts, whatever, cetera, whatever it was, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. at the city gates, and so it said that her husband was known. So obviously, her husband is respected, right? And so, um, I wanted to ask you um, because this happens with in with men. I, sometimes I, I I have been around men a long time in the church, you know. Um, occasionally, you'll hear someone kind of bad mouth their wife. Okay, so. A husband's desire is to be respected, but I, I, I've heard from you how you say sometimes women will badmouth their husbands. Why do you think that happens? Well, unfortunately, I think it's, what is that saying? Familiarity breeds contempt. You know, you're just around that person all the time. Yeah. And it's just a constant motivation, heart check, where you would say, Lord, you know, check my heart mm -hmm. and, and I want to respect my husband. That's the what the wife prays. And then the husband is constantly wanting to love the wife as Christ loves the church. And so 
you know, self-sacrifice. That's yeah. what that's what makes yeah. up a good marriage. So I think when people are venting or saying mm-hmm. those things, sometimes it's in jest, you know, just being yeah, silly. Yeah, yeah, true, true. But I think that, you know, really um, we have to be very careful and mindful because we want to build up especially our spouse yeah. with our words. We don't want to be putting them down in front of other people. That's that's not right yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, so it says here in verse 27, it says, she watches over the activities of her household and is never idle. Yes. So we talk about today, like we're, we're busy, we're busy, right. we're busy. Right. How do you, how do you, what does this mean to like a woman who's busy with the things of her household, mm-hmm. um, never idle, but at the same time, you don't want to be like a Martha or a Mary. Like, you want to be a Mary, not a Martha. So how would you reconcile this scripture? Because it says you're never idle, right. but the scripture says, be still and know that I'm God. Right. So a girlfriend and I were talking one time about how being a mom is like that acrobat that's juggling the plates right here and, and you know, oh, juggling. Yeah. And like at the halftime shows <laughs> yes. at the sporting events. Because, you know, there's so many things in motion. I mean, just think of the morning routine. This one needs to get her teeth brushed and that one needs to get mm-hmm. lunch going. And there's just so many things in motion and and it could be hectic and chaotic. And so that's what I think it means about does not eat the bread of idleness. She's just not sitting, you know, eating bonbons all day watching soap operas. Mm. She's busy about her father's business. Do they still sell bonbons? They sure do. (laughs) (laughs) They sure do. Ghirardelli (laughs) chocolates. Oh, yeah. But um, Pastor always says that, you know, our passion, our master passion in life is to be about our father's business. Mm -hmm which mirrors what Jesus said when he was 12. Didn't Amen. you know him about my so father's being, business? So not being idle, being about your father's business, right, right and doing the things of the Lord. Um, yes. So checking okay, in with God let's first. Let's move on you know. because we, yes. we're already, we, let's move sure. on. So track with this. Be, hang with this, guys, for a minute. This <laughs> one's a, this one's good. I feel this one. Um, this one says in verse 28, she watches over the activities of her, oh no, verse, yeah, her, verse 28, her children rise up and call her blessed and her husband also praises her. So I want to ask you, why, why would a husband want to praise his wife? Like what is the, what does, not that the wife has to do cartwheels and make right, a steak, right. steak and eggs for breakfast right. and a crazy Meat loaf yeah, or whatever. turkey dinner fancy but why what why would a, a a husband want to praise his wife well what again, what do you think she needs to do or again going to adam and eve the wife is the helpmate so i love it when you see somebody get an award you know at at the espn awards or you know to say my wife my bride my she she cheered me on yeah the wife is the biggest cheerleader for the husband and the husband is the protector to the wife so they complement each other in the ebb and flow of life yes so that's what i think that means is a cheer cheerleader you're yeah. cheering on I, your spouse i feel like for this a husband would want to praise his wife when uh he sees like the lord in her mm. right that's what i oh, I, yeah. I love that's about a, you it's like compliment. yeah Basically, Laura's almost like she's like a pretty much a pastor. Like, (laughs) no, I'm for real. Like, she just truth bombs me all the time, (laughs) and I'm grateful. So that's why I would want to praise my like. There's not like Pastor said this. Godliness is attractive, Mm. right? There's nothing more attractive than like a godly person because you're attracted to their soul, and so you should you uh, for a word to men out there you. You should praise your wife to your other brothers so that, you know, they can see like, hey, this is what God is doing in my marriage. And you know, you just bring up a good point. Um, A girlfriend of mine was saying the other day, we often hide, we often think the compliment, but don't say it out loud. Yeah. So this is saying he's, he's outwardly, verbally giving that praise out loud. Okay. So we just got the signal that we need to kind of hurry along but this is a great <laughs> topic um and thank you pastor for you broke you guys should go back and watch the yes, message it's pastor broke it down i liked right. how he chunked it out yes it's six six characteristic traits of a godly person may 9th mother's day message check it out okay <laughs> the last thing we always see this at hobby lobby on a on a picture on a <laughs> on a, <laughs> not wrong <laughs> we see this on hobby lobby dude all the time 
And I like Hobby Lobby. I like decorating, okay? <laughs> you, you could hate on me later, man. I like to decorate. I like to paint and do stuff. And, you know, I've been learning watercolor, too. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord will be praised. Yes. Give her the reward of her labor and let her works praise her In the at gates. the gates. So charm is deceit, deceptive and beauty is fleeting. I think women celebrate a lot of things today, Laura, right? Yes. Mainly looks, yes. beauty, Fitness. and we're obsessed with youth. Oh, Yoga yes. pants is the new norm. Yeah, um, for sure. We celebrate those things, but mm -hmm. why is it hard for women to, to re I mean, there's nothing wrong with having confidence, right? God, God confidence, right? Yes. Um, but why is this scripture something that women wrestle with? You might see a post mm -hmm. on the s social media, like, Hey, check me out or whatever, you know, right. um, you're, you're in a nice outfit or something, mm. but you won't put, but what what's more attractive like if maybe you might post a something different i don't know what i'm trying to say i guess what i'm trying to tell you is let me just read my notes why is it so hard for women to just re wrestle with this verse here mm. well i think that um god wants us what does that verse say godliness with contentment is great gain right so god wants us to adorn the inner beauty the soul the spirit um our love for the lord and women are so um, bombarded with imagery, magazines. Well, mm. magazines are outdated now. But when I was younger, I would look at Vogue and the, the the in style magazines, and you would look at all of these images, and you would want to look like that stylish girl on that magazine, mm -hmm. or the size two model, or whatnot. Yeah. And so that it's that image, and you know, idols. From the very beginning in the Bible, there's idols. So a woman sets up this idol in her mind of oh, what a gorgeous wow. woman and what a perfect no, mother really should look like. You're right. And and it's like you're constantly throwing that dart of wanting to and look like her and mark. you're missing it. Yeah. But when you when you look again, what is this Proverbs 31 woman? She's your goal, ladies. She's mm -hmm. my goal. She's our goal. So these things pass away. Charm is deceitful and beauty yeah. is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised and her legacy is eternal. Amen. My my precious sister in Christ, Victoria and Papa Lardo passed away in February. I have a picture up in the house and I think of her as one of the most godly women I've ever met. That's legacy. Amen. That's the goal, Amen. not Amen. the fleeting fashion, you know, image. Yeah. but it's, it, you're right with the wrestling. That's a very mm -hmm. keen observation. It's so true. Um, so verse 31 says, give her a reward of her labor and let her works praise her at the city gates. So. I'm just praising you because <laughs> not only are you an amazing mom, but you just broke this down. And I thought it was fit for, for a woman to talk about these things. So thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed this episode. Um, <clears throat> again, cmontclair.com. Check out our website. It has links to all of our social media accounts. Yes. And go back, listen to this message, and let's continue to strive to be godly people right and the proverbs 31 is the goal right Laura? that's right absolutely <laughs> all right god bless you guys god take bless. care we'll see you next week